It's definitely a great pleasure to present this data in Italy. I'm going to speak English, but for all the Italians who are here, I'll be glad to have a conversation in Italian if you want about that. Um, so I really need to thank uh, the amazing group of mentors who support um, my research at the Mind Institute in the last four years, including uh, Peter Mundi, Sally Altonov, and Greg Young, but most of all Sally Rogers. And the work that I'm presenting now really stems from uh, a number of endless conversations we had about imitation and action understanding in autism. Um, I recently moved uh, to the lab direct by Cheryl Disanayake uh, in Melbourne, Australia, and I really want to thank Cheryl and uh, Christelle and David Rambeth who helped me by giving me, com giving me some comments about the, a previous version of this presentation. Okay, so you heard a lot about action understanding this morning. You will hear some more today. What is action understanding? According to Brunner, making sense or constructing meaning is the fundamental characteristic of our self-conscious life. It's not only self-conscious. We make sense of other people's actions all the time. It's like breathing, it's like blinking our eyes. We don't realize how many times we do that, but we do it all the time. We do make sense of things. Sometimes it's difficult and effortful, but most of the time we don't even realize that. I'm talking about understanding goals, simple goals, intentions, not such things as false beliefs or sophisticated higher cognitive function. Understanding that, as Professor Rizzolatti was talking before about if I'm moving my hand toward an object, I'm not seeing a hand moving toward an object, I'm seeing someone who wants to grab an object. And this is difficult for children with autism or for adults with autism in general. Uh, this is reported by Therese Jolif, a person with high-functioning autism in 1992 in her autobiography she reports reality is a confusing interacting mass of events people places sounds and sights there seem to be no clear boundaries order or meaning to anything a large part of my life is spent just trying to work out the pattern behind everything and set routine times particular routes and rituals hope help to get order into an unbearable chaotic life. So she found it difficult to work out a pattern behind chaos. Now the big question is how do typically developing people find the pattern behind chaos? Uh, before I continue on that, uh, I want to mention that uh, experimental research on uh, understanding, on action understanding uh, in autism is quite confused. And uh, we have um, data showing that children with autism will predict actions that lead uh, to simple goals. But research, like the research by Cattaneo and Boria from the Parma group that was mentioned before by Professor Rizzolatti, also showed some uh, interesting differences not, uh, in the time, in the efforts, but most of um, one paper in particular, uh, found this discrepancy between uh, predicting actions in which the objects were used in a conventional or standard way and actions where the objects were used in an unconventional way. In other words, understanding self-explaining actions or actions in which the object is telling you the entire story and actions which involve some change in the routine or in the standard way to carry that specific action. So uh, I started working on this um, working hypothesis about two different pathways um, in understanding simple actions involving uh, understanding action based on what the objects are usually used for, or understanding action by understanding those social cues that are conveyed by the agent's face and, uh, and other cues displayed by the body who will tell us that there is an intention that might be different from what 
the object involved with the action suggests. Um, so the first referential cue that I was interested in was uh, um, gaze direction. Uh, this is because from infancy, infancy on, we use gaze direction to understand, to figure out what other people are about to do. And gaze direction provides crucial information on the course of action. And uh, my mentor, Peter Mundi, every two days, every two days will say, where eyes go, behaviors follow. And this seems to be a kind of a cognitive bias that infants uh, have. They do know that where when I'm looking at something, I'm very likely to be, do, to be doing something with the thing that I'm looking at. In fact, infants expect people to act upon objects that they are looking at rather than objects that, are, that they are ignoring. So uh, my work in hypothesis uh, involved two different possibilities. The first one, maybe children with autism, they fail to capture, to capture those referential cues. As we know, we all know about reduced attention to social stimuli. So one possibility is that those cues that I use to convey my intention, like looking at a specific object, like looking at this before I actually grasp this. Maybe children with autism are not looking at those cues. So they miss the cue, they don't understand what's going on, they cannot predict, they cannot learn. Now it's very important to remember that understanding is before learning. There's no learning without understanding. There's no learning of actions without understanding the actions. So we always have to consider this possibility. They don't learn because they're not looking at the right thing, so they cannot predict what's going on. Um, the other possibility is that children with autism may look, may pay attention to those referential cues. They will look at my gaze direction, but they will not be able to understand uh, the agent's action. They will not be able to relate the gaze direction to what I'm going to do with the objects. And uh, it is very important to discern these two different possibilities because we're very interested in the implications for treatment that these two different possibilities uh, involve. And uh, I conducted a study which involves 18 uh, children with autism, no Asperger, no PDD, no S, only children with autism, but high functioning autism. As you can see, oh, sorry. And uh, as you can see, they're all in the high-functioning range, but their uh, social skills are very affected. They hold me criteria for autism. And the control group was a group of 18 pre-adolescents with autism. And they, both groups were uh, matched for chronological age, language level, and uh, uh, performance uh, IQ. Okay? And uh, so this is the experiment. We asked participants in the study to watch a video, actually a series of video clips. And in these video clips, the agents begin to perform an action. But the clip ends before <coughs> the end state of the action is completely. They see someone doing something, and then the video stops. Okay? And then participants are asked to complete the action as the model <coughs> would have. And. Uh, there were two conditions where the same action was carried out by the agent, but the agent was looking in two different directions, which will change the way uh, usually people understand and predict the actions. And we used the eye tracking to determine whether participants will capture the referential cues, whether they will use the gaze direction to tell what is going to happen next, and we wanted to explore the correlation between this capturing the cues and the behavioral performance. Are then children predicting, understanding what the agents want to do? And this is how the, this is how the videos look like. So in uh, the first condition, neutral condition, uh, the actor is stacking blocks according to a color pattern. 
and uh, her face is neutral. She's not going to uh, look anywhere else. She's just looking at what she's doing.